match. There's a masochism about this match. What the hell is this now? The king of Carcosa has come home. Raven coming to the defense of Akira. Kane has been synonymous with that championship for many months now. With the full force. way harder than I thought it would be. You know, when, when I started the Bumai Fight Club, I did it for me. I did it for me. But as time went on, y'all brought the love, that passion to every, to every fight and to every opportunity that I had. And Bumaye, it, 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 it morphed, it morphed into this movement. This movement. It morphed, it morphed into a movement that I could, it, it, it was so big. It was so big, it is so big. And I never could have imagined that it grew to such heights. And that's, that's because Bumaye is for. Bumaye is for. But losing the championship, I let myself down. I let myself down. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I let myself down. But, what hurts me the most, what eats me up inside the most, is that I let all of you down. <sighs> you know, I've always been a straight shooter. I've always told you guys the truth. And, you know, after thinking about this for a few weeks, I don't know what's next for me. So, with that said, I think it's time for, M for Alex Kane to step away from MLW. Wow, could you imagine MLW, or the Bumaye Fight Club for that matter, without Alex Kane at the helm? And wait a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. But the last thing you are is a goddamn quitter. Three years, three years we went up and down these roads. You put Bumaye on the map. And the and you want to go on vacation? You are a world champion. You beat every single person on this roster for three straight years. And you want to quit today? No, no, no. no. It's not on my watch, because you won't do it without me. I ain't no quitter. These people never gave up on you. Who's this for? It's for us? It's for you? Pumbaye is for these 
people. Listen, you're a captain. Do what captains do. Hard work starts today. Back to basics. You want that title back? You want to go on vacation? You want that damn title back? We got work to do, dog. Day one starts today. Let's go. You're not going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. These people are not leaving your side. Yay is forever. Pumaye is forever. Pumaye is forever. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is A.J. Francis, and I'm the hottest free agent in the world. Don't believe me? Ask your girl. Who hot? Not. Nah. Alex Kane, brother, I'm proud of you. Your title reign as MLW champion has been nothing short of spectacular and you put your people on. You put our people on. So I'm here to give you your flowers. But my only question is, when I'm gonna get mine? See, we both trying to be Black Panthers. You trying to be T'Challa, and I'm trying to be Huey P. <laughs> and to quote the immortal prophet Ray J, I did it first. Who was the first brother to concoct an all-black faction that represented the culture and could not be created, replicated, or controlled? Me. Who was the first brother to stand up for his people no matter the consequence? Me. And who would make a better face of their little double? Me. And that's all. Umaye. Bumaye, Bumaye. You drop in on a great moment. You drop in on a great moment to spew some garbage, to spew some trash on my name. See, AJ, you aren't trying to be Huey P. Nah, 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 because you weren't the leader of that movement. They put that on another man. You think you're about to come into my house in one shot? We don't, we, we don't play them games, ho. We don't play them games, because that's all you go intimidation games. So you're going to join WTF? You're going to join the World Tandy Bet Federation? I guess I can't call you a melanin deficient hoe. But what I will do, I will run through you because you ain't clearing this one. Just like you couldn't clear that top rope, you ain't clearing this one. I'm about to smoke you like I've done everybody who has joined the World Titan Federation. And that AJ, that is on. Bumaye, Bumaye, Bumaye. After some apparent doubt from the suplex assassin Alex Kane, it seems like mentally, spiritually, he's back better than ever and ready for his next challenge. Bumaye forever. Unless you're AJ Francis. He seems to have a big issue with what's been going on with Alex Kane. But Joe, I gotta talk to you about Contra. In 2021, MLW thought they ridded Contra forever. It turns out they didn't cut off the head of the beast quite yet.
Wolf Contra terrorized Super Fight, hijacking the show with a targeted attack on the Samoan werewolf Jacob Fatu. Fatu severely injured in the attack, which then had a declaration of war put out by the black hand of Contra, Mads Cruel Kruger. Fatu is obliged later tonight. We'll see Fatu and Mads Kruger one on one in a Bakley death match. But first, we kick things off with trios action here on Burning Cry. The following bout is a six man tag team match set for one fall. Introducing first from the village hidden beneath the concrete, weighing in at 170 pounds. and his squad is ready tonight. Well, we've seen Deppin fine, suspended, punished, reprimanded, and it's almost like he's abused by it. It's almost like he laughs it off. Tony Deppin just snubs his nose at authority and does what he wants when he wants. Three-way standoff as we kick this trios matchup off. Now, keep in mind, it was a month ago at Kings of Coliseum, available across the world on Triller TV, where Wasted Youth teamed with the Prize City OG Alec Price to defeat Deppin, Crawford, and McCoy. We'll see if there's similar success in this first-time trio with Katano and Austin Luke as part of Wasted Youth. And Youth exploding. Marcus Mathers, 20 years of age, Christian, when he was born. Uh, MLW was already a couple of years into existence. He may be the first male athlete who is who was not alive when MLW was formed. 20 years old and an absolute phenom already. All six yeah. of these men young in their experience. Deppin the most experienced one in the ring as he delivers that nasty kick in the corner. Yeah, Deppin as the influencer. Deppin as the motivator. Scares me. Because the last thing any wrestling company needs is three Tony Deppins running around. But Griffin McCoy, six foot two, six year pro, natural athlete, scores with a superplex, a powerplex double team, and Deppin nearly takes it away. Great chemistry from Deppin and company. And Deppin has incredible fundamentals. He was able to hook the outside leg there, but it wasn't enough leverage to keep a three count. Deppin going to continue to work here and try to earn himself a pinfall victory for his team. Now there's a, a giant welt on his back. Not sure if that's from this matchup or one of his other battles in recent times. We've seen Mathers go full throttle here in MLW, and I would rather not look at that. But the last place you want to be is in Tony Deppin's corner, for sure. And it's loud here. You can hear the fans in Philadelphia jeering at the team of Deppin. Deppin has not done anything to earn respect from these people. He's a great athlete, but that's not what gets the headlines. What gets the headlines is Deppin is being a grimy, slimy, manipulative, you know what. Well, that's just like your opinion, Joe. All right, well, I'm allowed. It's a lot of other people's opinions as well. And check that out, McCoy, the delayed school. 
Scoop Slam made Mathers think about it. And could not connect to the knee. Definitely as well. The elusiveness of Mathers that cannot escape the Silver Sniper. And oh, collision there. As Crawford and McCoy hit heads. No, no, kick Whoa. What a springboard to come back into the ring. Look at the offense. The man raised in a village, hidden in concrete, bringing that explosiveness to light. The strikes, the kick, and now look, double underhook on the arm. Incredible. This should do it. Near fall on that Tiger driver. I'm not sure what Catano calls it, but half a count away from what could have been this young man's biggest win of his MLW career. The, the fans solidly behind him. And these fans are so excited to be here tonight. We are just getting started. But Deppin uh, uh, and Crawford and McCoy keep swirling Saw and attack there. Attempted a cover, yeah, but great call. Katana was not the legal man anymore. Austin Luke comes in. 22 years of age is Austin Luke. We saw him oppose Wasted Youth once upon a time a few months ago, but certainly knows that team for so long. He slid into that spot as soon as it became available. And Austin Luke showing what he's made of. You're telling me this guy's only 22? Got the whole world ahead of him. Calls himself Prince Harming. There's something about MLW here and the youthful revolution that's happening here. Incredible talent from all over the world wanting to be here and wrestle for MLW. And check out this double team. Double storm to the spine. Into the cover. Two count only. Christie make a great point when it comes to young, hungry talent coming into themselves, hitting that next level, full of motivation, ready to show out and steal the show. That's Major League Wrestling in a nutshell. You're seeing it here in this match, folks. You're seeing the future of MLW. You're seeing a leader like Tony Depp and a veteran of the business. He's a young guy himself, Joe. Wait, this could be Youth Guard Wild. We've seen ways to utilize that belt. McCoy, or excuse me, uh, Crawford Ooh. had that scouted. And there, connecting with a silver bullet was TJ Crawford. Katano yeah. looking for tri grips rotation. I've never seen something like that. That was awesome. Half and half suplex by the technically proficient McCoy. And Mathers the drop kick. Mathers fighting to prove he's got a home here. He felt like a misfit, an outcast his whole life. But now he feels the wrath of the knees of Tony Deppin. Deppin looking like a Tasmanian devil right now. Look at him, he looks insane. This guy is absolutely attacking every limb, every and every opportunity, trying to take his opponent down to the mat. He's gonna do a high risk maneuver here, but fighting back. Well, Mathers is right at home on the top rope, but we're deaf and slipped. McCoy bats clean up. It's dangerous up there, Joe. McCoy hit face first. Marcus Mathers. It's so loud in here. He's in his perch. As soon as he came out, Joe, Tony Deppin is the type of leader that can take this company over. MLW should be glad to have him here. His team gets the victory tonight. Deppin, Crawford, McCoy. Show that chemistry. Whether you like them, whether you don't. Whether they're a problem for the front office, whether they're the most hated in Major League Wrestling. Bottom line, Tony Deppin, Griffin McCoy, TJ Crawford are damn good. And they're successful here on Burning Crush. They say, never meet your idols. Raven with a kendo stick to Paige, to Callahan. Raven is assaulting the calling. Fakes, phonies. Raven, you're a false prophet. Scotty, you are a shell of your former self. You're no longer the leader of a hardcore revolution. You're a false prophet. Ricky, you like blood. Cannonball, you like blood? Me, I like blood. So now going forward, there's gonna be blood every day. There's gonna be blood forever, Jay Chris. Tonight, you will bleed. Akira, dumbass, fake, you will bleed. Raven, you will bleed. Trust in the calling. Now that Raven has joined Akira in flying the calling coop, what frame of mind will Ricky Shane?
Shane Page be in as he defends the open weight title against the debuting Jake Crist tonight. Plus, a four-way featherweight matchup. Zeta, Delmi Exo, Notorious Mimi, Tierra James. It's next. Now that I'm in MLW and I'm also challenging New Japan opponents, I want to challenge a New Japan opponent in New York City. And it doesn't matter if you come to me or if I go to you in Japan. It doesn't matter what style you bring to the table, because I'm the king of bros. I represent MLW. And I'll beat anyone, anytime, bro. See you there. Back here on Major League Wrestling and a most important guest joining us here on commentary, Selena De La Renta, promotion owner Dorado. What gives us the pleasure of having you out ringside? I'm here to watch the chump. You know, the chump. Okay. Tell me. Do you know what that is, Joe? Yeah, I understand. I understand. Do you know? He knows. He looks at himself every single day in the mirror. Right. Featherweights are on tap. Selena watching intently as we send it to the ring at Rich Palatino. The following is a had thought we learned that a number of weeks ago but selena i guess i was a little bit taken aback when you said the chump because i wasn't sure who you meant because you and zeta had some cross words a few weeks ago as well oh so you felt personally that zeta is a chump that's what I'm saying. it sounds like that's what you're saying but you're right <laughs> all want whatever they want that doesn't mean they're gonna get it true. but since all the women are doing that would you like to sign up her opponent currently residing in North Hampton Massachusetts the God Queen tell me XO well, we what take is a look this at tell me XO who certainly you have had your eyes on this Wait looks like low budget. Whoa, whoa, hey. <laughs> Selena De La Renta standing up. They have words here, Joe. This, this, this could get fun. Keep in mind, Selena is the main reason Delmi is no longer featherweight champion today. But we've seen a lot of mystery swirling around Delmi, and that picture became clearer after Super Fight. Cesar Duran, El Jefe, is back in a pursuit of power. The Azteca henchmen have gifted Delmi Exo things like a, a key, an envelope, a cell phone. The end goal is clear, but how does Delmi feel about this? Let me try it. And their opponent from Westchester, Pennsylvania, the notorious Mimi. Well, Mimi calls herself Wrestling's Angel. She wants to fly higher than anybody else, but she may underappreciated because so much 
focus has been all on all the moving parts between Zeta, Delmi, Tara James, of course, Janai Kai, who we'll talk about uh, that Selena has brought into the fold. But Mimi is not getting those presses, those headlines. She may look to change that tonight. You know, I think the fans would agree that Selena De La Renta has actually just made this company better. Yeah, a hundred percent. But wouldn't the fans also agree that Delmi kind of looks like a cheap bus light year? It's like a bad costume. Wow. It's harsh as the action gets underway in this uh, one fall four way matchup with four top contenders. And, and certainly, Selena, I would be remiss if I didn't mention uh, they are all fighting for certainly a chance to get noticed by uh, Janai Kai. She looks like Buzz Lightyear, but she wrestles like Woody. Okay, I, speaking, of course, of Delmi Exo once again, yes. But what we wait, look at Zeta. What is this? Zeta lands in the arms of Brett Ryan Goslin, and it didn't save her from Tierra James Wrath. This friendship between Brett Ryan Goslin and Zeta is so fascinating. Whoa! Delmi with a suicide dive to the floor. You know what? I do respect Mr. Saint Laurent. I know that he knows what he's doing. It's kind of genius to hop on the Barbie train with Barbie and the Ken. You know, it's it's working Look for him. Cross body by notorious Mimi, and certainly MSL and you, Selena, have had a working relationship as of late. Is yeah. Zeta's inroads for that featherweight championship going to cause a little bit of a malfunction in that junction? Well, <laughs> that's assuming Zeta gets a chance, and I don't think that's going to happen, so we're going to be okay. You know, Zeta's not a serious challenger to the kick demon. And there you see. Oh, you, a tough you, kick. you can literally take Barbie apart, rip In her head off. To count only center of the ring. Now, uh, Selena, obviously your bad blood with Delmi boiled over here before the matchup even started. Uh, what are your thoughts on Delmi today? Uh, stop being a crybaby and shut up. Uh, now She's gone emo ever since she lost the title, let's be honest. She's just not a top-level fighter. Tara with a double team interrupted there, and they got to have your head in a swivel in these four-way matchups. Yeah, you know, we've seen Delmi a number of times over the past few weeks. She was given an envelope, uh, a cell phone, a key by these Azteca henchmen, and it certainly seems like we could trace those breadcrumbs as far as who they're coming from. I think that's way above your pay grade, and you know okay. what? I am glad that you're pitching up. I'm sorry, like tying this all together, but you know what? Delmi can't. Okay, well, there's a DDT by Zeta. She can't connect the dots. She's just, she's clueless. We'll see if the dots are connected here in the near fall. Uh, Selena, is there either of these athletes that you would prefer to see challenge Janai Kai next? <laughs> I prefer if they all went home. I see. Am I allowed to ask where Janai is this week? You're not allowed to ask anything. You've okay. asked way too many questions. Who do you think you okay, are? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm Tell me in control These now. aren't featherweights. These are faux weights. Christian, you want to try your luck here? Wait, there's another right suplex. Into a cover, two count only. No, they're faux weights. I mean, I'm, I agree with Selena. This is uh, clearly the faux weight division. Well, finally, somebody smart here. Oh, it took you to change your colors over here, Christian. But right now, it's Delmi looking ahead back to the winner's circle. What is she doing there? Keep in mind, Delmi was the athlete Janai Kai defeated to become the featherweight champion. And Delmi now finds herself in a bad way. Here's Mimi. Oh, yeah. Tierra James Zeta. All these athletes fighting for one common goal. No way. Look at this. There you go. <laughs> a Tower of Doom. They come tumbling down. And they're covering the ring for two, but uh, Selena De Laurenta, a smile on her face a mile wide. And another cover. Uh, what a great day. And again, trying to be the opportunist, but not to be. Zeta trying to put these women away. She seems to be in firm control of the match. Certainly has shined more than the other women in this match. What do you feel about that, Selena? Like I said, I am focused. I don't need you asking questions. Tierra hits humble her. That would have done it. But Mimi played spoiler. High round kick and a back kick connects as well. Mimi bringing the heaven sent kick, but Delmi able to counter. What's up? The talent in this women's division has Selena having words. 
Oh, oh, tell me. Oh, how about you just go Selena, right diversion from here at ringside. I told you this was going to get fun, Joe. <laughs> Selena, some decorum, please. And now here comes I'm prettier. Zeta just drops Mimi, and she got the win. Uh oh. to do the dirty work. But Selena's been driven over the edge by this Lucha Libre power struggle. Yeah. Let them yeah. fight. Yeah. 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 Back up, back up. I know that you have access to Mr. St. Laurent's wallet, but no amount of money is going to get you wrestling skills or a shot on my title. Harsh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, Zeta, don't listen to her. All right, she's just jealous that she's not as gorgeous as you. She's jealous that she will never be as skilled as you. You are a queen. She <laughs> there are levels to this gorgeousness. First of all, first of all, have you seen that new Barbie movie? At the end of it, Ken never gets laid. <laughs> um. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah? Oh yeah? Well, at least he, shut up, at least he doesn't go around using his mouth to get what he wants. Okay. This is getting stiff. I, I like can it. understand why somebody like you who has no skills would think that that's the only way to get things in life. But since that's what you want, be careful what you wish for, bitch. Well, what does that mean, Joe? Now may not be the night to cross Selena, who's in an extra bad mood, because we understand Cesar Duran will reveal his newest acquisition for Azteca Lucha. Waiting, watching, two years, two long and painful years, Jacob, I have waited. A Sentai Death Squad who used to stand tall and fight with Batu are now swarming him. Time is indeed the slow death, and your time is coming to an end. Oh my God! The black hand of Contra! Jesus Christ! Tonight, I like the spark that will engulf the world. It starts with you. Vengeance is indeed the reward for my patience. Hail, Contra!
back here on Burning Crush as we are counting down under two weeks to Intimidation Games from New York City, live across the world on Trailer TV Plus. And we know Satoshi Kojima will defend the MLW World Title as the only two-time champion in our history. Defense against Minoru Suzuki, two bona fide Japanese legends do battle for the belt that Kojima turned into a world title over 20 years ago. And how about the return to the major league of Bobby Fish? Fish brings his expert mixed martial arts hybrid style into battle against Alex Kane, who knows a number of ways to hurt you in his own right, and he has extra motivation. And what is on the mind of A.J. Francis? He has made his presence known already earlier tonight. He will be there live and in person at Intimidation Games. And Matt Riddle laid out the challenge. Anyone from New Japan Pro Wrestling, step up and meet him one-on-one -on -one in the ring. We hope to find the identity of Matt Riddle's opponent in this broadcast. But first, who goes into Intimidation Games as national openweight champion? We're about to find out. The following bout is set for one fall with a 30-minute time limit, and it is for the MLW National Openweight Championship. Introducing first the challenger from Dayton, Ohio, weighing in at 175 pounds, the fire starter, Jake Chris. I have to wonder what frame of mind Ricky Shane Page is approaching this match in after what we saw at Super Fight. Akira bound, defenseless, at the mercy of Ricky Shane Page, Sammy Callahan, and the calling. They motion for the spiritual father of the calling, Raven, to make his grand return. And instead, Raven blew the coup, betrayed Ricky Shane Page's vision, and stood by Akira. The lone man who never stopped trusting in Raven. As the ominous chill engulfs the 2300 arena. You can feel the mood change in here, Joe Dombrowski. There's a lot, a lot to be said about these men making their way down the ring. Representing the calling and hailing from Sandusky, Ohio, weighing in at 301 pounds, he is the current reigning and defending MLW National Open Weight Champion, Ricky Shane Page. Ricky Shane Page has recrafted and rechristened the calling in his own image, and that slab of weaponry in front of him, uncharacteristically, Ricky Shane Page shrugs it off, but we see Cord Wallace out here, we see Cannonball out here, some heavy hitters with these, these goons in the gas mask. Ricky Shane Page never walks alone and has found subordinates to do his bidding. Look at the table, ringside, weapons strewn about, baseball bats, barbed wire. I think I see a scythe all kinds of craziness going on. This match is one that I've been looking forward to for weeks. And those calling cards that have been draped across countless victims of the calling over the past couple of years. Jake Chris knows Ricky Shane Page all too well. They go back uh, some 18 years. They both started wrestling in Ohio. But now with the world watching on BN Sports and YouTube, Jake Chris starts the fire. Oh, and the DDT right the on the cement. Pads around the ring. They missed him entirely. That was a DDT right on the cold hard cement. Ricky Shane Page is up but out of his feet. Jay Chris, the acai boot song. Jay Chris is insane. I mean, the, the, the beauty of that moonsault, how impressive with that. About 15 feet in the air was Jay Christ. Hey, Christian, there's only one chance to make a first impression. This is his MLW debut, and Chris is making the most of the moment. All but 306 pounds. Ricky Shane Page caught Chris into the power slam. Ricky Shane Page lives, thrives in darkness, wants to spread that misery, that hate, that angst. Jake 
Chryst has been there. He's fought his own demons, his own darkness. That's where the Firestarter name comes from, because now there's a burning sensation inside Jake Chryst to do good, to do right, to make the most of his opportunities. He's been very public and open about his struggles, has Jake Chryst. But three-plus years, clean, sober, of sound mind, and 171 pounds, best shape of his life, mind, body, and soul. Jake Chris looking to score big, but is the darkness, the calling spreads, too much to fight off. He could be sober, he could have found God, he could have had all these great things happen to him over the next three years. This might be the worst night of his life, having a face against Ricky Shane Page. Cannonball, you obviously can't see his face, but he looked kind of hungry, didn't he? You, you shudder what could happen. I'm shuddering at the idea of what's on that table, and yeah. if, if it's gonna happen, in this match, if it's going to get involved in this match, these weapons here, are, I mean, those some of the most dangerous weapons I've seen in professional wrestling. I mean, we've seen what the calling has done to their own that fall out of line and think for themselves. Like Akira, who has been subject to so much torture by Ricky Shane Page, by Sammy Callahan, who we saw at the top of this segment. Akira dared think for himself, said, I didn't sign up to be a follower of Ricky Shane Page. I signed up to follow Raven. And Akira stood on his own two feet, fought the world, and there still may be dire consequences. But right now, Akira's in that fight. Jake Crist is in this fight. Could be looking to capture the open weight title as the big man taken down. Jake Crist with that flying forearm right on the button, able to put down the near 400 pound Ricky Shane Page on his back. These men have met in dozens of tag team matches. I don't know if they've ever faced one-on-one, -on -one, however. An MLW, a pro wrestling first. Jay Chris scores with a crossbody. Wide stance, and Ricky gets the shoulder up. There's something special about the way Jay Chris wrestles. There's something athletic mixed with the striking. There's something so unique about his offense. He's very impressive. You got to see him live. You got to get out to an MLW show and watch this guy work. Jay Chris does so many of the little things so well. But it won't stop Ricky Shane Page from trying to send him direct one way to Carcosa. Chris the DDT. And who, who oh would have been on God. this? Wait, what? Cannonball. What's happening here, Joe? Chris has the cover. Wait. Near fall. Chris almost snuck in and took that championship at Cannonball. Just got it right in the teeth. Cannonball's out. And that pump well, kick no, landed no, no, no. right on the chin. Wait a minute. Sammy Callahan! Sammy takes down Jake Crist, and there's history there! And that's a shame, because this was an awesome match. It used to be Ohio versus everything, but now Akira, Akira from behind, looking for the death penalty, and Ricky Shane Page connects with a forearm. And it's Crist and Akira rallying against the pestilence of the calling. We have lost all control here. I'm not sure we ever had it. Akira. What's Akira thinking here? Akira! Risking life and limb! The chair, his body, a projectile! Into the darkness and in the ring! Cannonball just hit the Raven effect. DDT on Jake Crist. There's just too damn many of them. And Akira. Certainly, we've seen the allegiance of Raven and how that changed back at Super Fight. But his teachings live on within the calling. And now, no. Oh, we we got to get some more you've reps out here. What's happening? You've done enough. Jay Chris is in a great place in his life and his this career. This is his debut, Joe. Oh, they're going to take away everything Jay Chris has worked to earn. God for Akira. A chair to cannonball. Absolute bedlam here in Philadelphia. But the debuting, Jay Chris going top rope with a steel chair. Cannonball's in a bad spot. Oh my God. Oh, it's gonna take a hell of a lot more to quell that fire that burns right in the soul of Jay Chris. And Akira has been proud to stand as an individual. We got about 25 members of the MLW security force trying to stop Cannonball and RSP. Akira and Jake Crist, a common cause, a common
to sign his open contract and step in the ring with him as he represents MLW. And we can confirm that contract has been signed and we'll find out who that someone is tonight. Speaking of interpromotional warfare, we are still reeling over the return of El Jefe. Cesar Duran, the practitioner of Azteca Lucha, was in the corner of Mystico represented the greatest box office draw of the modern era of Lucha Libre as he was opposed by chief rival and member of Selena De La Renta's Promociones Dorado of Verno. It was Mystico who came out victorious, shifting that balance of power in the battle that has now begun between Cesar Duran and Selena De La Renta. And we understand we'll have more developments in that power struggle as well because Cesar Duran will reveal the latest acquisitions to his Azteca Lucha camp here tonight. And that's not all. Earlier today, our cameras caught this meeting between Cesar Duran and our own CEO, Court Bauer. All right, we got this deal all locked out. I'll send you the details tonight, okay? A deal's a deal, man. We got this locked out. I, I, bye -bye. I could I'm sue the entire company for allowing Salina pay la renta, dragging me along with that stupid sack. Why did you do that? Look. I don't know what's going on in your personal yes, life. Yes, you do. That's bullshit. That. You were involved in that. But listen, I could use violent methods to solve this, but I have a plan. Ah, uh, what is that? Yes, I want to return to the MLW as a matchmaker. Ah, uh, hear me out. I, 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 let me just say this. Look, you did me a huge favor back yes, in the day. Yes, you, you, you owe me a favor. You brought me the best lucha, and it was a little complicated. You got into some questionably ethical You made stuff. it complicated. Listen to me. I want to make an Astuka Lucha promotion and you could be my partner. MLW could be partnered with Azteca Lucha. Well, I am looking to do global expansion. Tell me more. We could do it in Chicago, mm -hmm. May 11th, and I'll bring the best luchadores I have. The best? The best luchadores in the world. Mystico? I'll bring Mystico. Don't you ever do that again. Court, court, we have to talk. We have to talk. I know you have a hole in your card, a titan-sized hole, and I think you need to give a shot to the World Titan Federation. Who's your team? It doesn't matter. Two members fighting for the World Tag Team titles. We want the gold, Court. We need the gold. This is valid in 17 states if you shake. I love it. I love it. Cesar Duran is making big moves off the bat, and perhaps the biggest was securing Mystico a shot at the MLW World Middleweight Championship against Promociones Dorados. Rocky Romero, the reigning middleweight champion, it goes down in under two weeks at Intimidation Games on Triller Plus. But coming up next, the philosophical differences between the second gear crew and the World Titan Federation continue to erupt in further violence. Tom Lawler, Matthew Justice is a heartbeat away. And still ahead, the first action of the brand new MLW World Champion, Satoshi Kojima, teams with Okamura to take on World Titan Federation superstars, Richard Holiday and Davey Boy Smith Jr. Don't go anywhere. Champion belt. But nice. we will look for this tag championship. Mm. Anytime, any place yeah. you want. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. We yes. love it. Yes. 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 What kind of unscrupulous <laughs> cockamamie nonsense is taking place here? Everybody knows that the World Titan yes. Federation at Intimidation Games gets the next shot at the World Tag Team titles and not Cozy Max. Yeah, and what the hell is a Cozy Max anyway? We are Cozy Max. Sold it's a hygiene product. Don't worry about it. I told you. Yeah. You know, MSL, getting real sick of your shit around here. 
So how about, since you want to have this title match, you take on us, huh? What are you, a matchmaker now? Going back to what sticking carrots in horses' mouths and leave the matchmaking to me. I am the only legitimate promoter. On. It's the MLW upcoming fight calendar. We're all excited as Intimidation Games inches closer, under two weeks away from New York City, across the world on Trailer TV Plus. And then, once upon a time in New York comes your way, 100% free across the world on YouTube, be it sports and be it sports extra. And then, back to Trailer TV Plus for all-star cards, March 29th, May 11th, and now we can finally reveal the location of the much anticipated sixth annual Battle Riot. Folks, we would love to invite you to join us and riot on June 1st as MLW invades the hallowed grounds in Atlanta, Georgia of Center Stage Deep for Battle Riot 6. Tickets go on sale this Thursday, February 22nd at 10 a.m. You can get them on MLWlive.com or at Ticketmaster. I'll say that Battle Riot each and every year is one of the biggest, the most fun, the most anticipated events on the MLW calendar year. 40 athletes, wear what you want, bring what you want, fight it out, only one is left standing. They'll get an MLW world title shot. Come riot with us in Atlanta, historic center stage on June 1st. But now, let's send it back to the ring and Rich Paladino. The following bout is set for one fall. Introducing first, promoted by St. Laurent, and hailing from the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, weighing in at 206.9 pounds, World Titan Federation Superstar, Filthy Tom Lawler. When you look at Tom Lawler's history, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, MMA practitioner, NCWA national. Oh, oh wait! More on that later. Matthew Justice from behind, and there's some of that second gear crew rebelliousness from Matthew Justice. Well, usually we wait till both competitors are in the ring to get the match started, but a brawl breaking out on the outside of the ring, right in front of the broadcast position, and Justice just slamming. Oh just slamming Tom Lawler into the corner post. There may be not two factions more uh, diametrically opposed anywhere in sports, anywhere in life, than the second gear crew and the World Titan Federation. One wants corporate synergy. The other are outlaws. They're rebels. They ride the roads and do what they want. And that old school territory feeling of pro wrestling, uh, of surviving how you can on the rough roads. That's how SGC lives every single day. We've known for years that MLW represents all the colors of professional wrestling and sports entertainment. And this is a clash between those two styles right now. Right now, pro wrestling getting the edge. Styles make fights. And Matthew Justice has the most fearless Devil May Care style you can think of. He jumped off the roof in New York City on top of What Josh a moment Bishop. that was, what a moment. And I, went, oh, I think St. Laurent had a hold of Justice's ankle, by the way, and as the bell rings, oh, look, look at him scurrying away, oh, giddy. What is wrong with you? Oh, MSL, hey, welcome, would MSL you like to join here. us? On commentary, 
What did you do that for now? Do, do what for, Can sir? You stay out of the matchup. I'm not in the matchup. I'm in the commentary booth. I see that. Welcome to commentary, sir. I did sir. exactly what you wanted. Can you please stay here? I will always stay here in your heart. I know. Okay. Oh, good grief. I'm not even going to respond to that. MSI, I want to say you're doing a great job Thank with you. WTA. You are, too. You're leaving your boy yeah. hanging there, yeah. I never leave the boys hanging. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. But right now, Tom Lawler, WTF SGC rivalry. And certainly it seems to me that SGC are public enemy number one when it comes to your vision of the World Titan well, Federation. Well, look, I have a great vision for the World Titan Federation because we're fighting for the World Tag Team Championship in New York. That's our home territory. And I'm actually working on opening a WTF restaurant in Times Square. Oh, what, Times kind of, Square. what kind of food? Oh, no carbs, I can tell you that. No All carbs. protein and fiber. So if I wanted like a baguette, I couldn't get one? No, absolutely no. not. You'd oh, be no. banned You're for life. You're not welcome in the restaurant, John. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. Tom Lawler hammering away on just, you can see the, the welts, the discolorations on Justice's body. You know, I'm so excited to be heading back to New York. I'm trying to get a meeting with Court Bauer, actually. He's been ducking me. I have a lot of sage advice. I know the Fed could be helping MLW way more. The World Titan Federation. We could be co-promoters. I'm open to negotiations. The Fed is not that. wanting to talk to you. Uh, it's Lawler. Now, why does Tom Lawler need a rebrand? I don't understand this. He's a national wrestling champion. Sure. UFC. Black belt. I get it. The, world Titan, be an the world Titan Federation has more accolades than you could even imagine, and that's why. I've invited Court Bauer to a personal tour of the World Titan Federation headquarters. We put smiles on the faces of the masses. Wow. Matthew Just is not smiling right now. The WTF multiverse is taking over sports entertainment. There's 27 Tom Lawlers at the moment, and they're all going to be champions soon. What? Yes. That makes sense. My oh, God. there's filthy Tom. There's clean Tom. There's in the middle Tom. We got we got vascular Tom. We have pale Tom. We have we have tan Tom. We have Tom Tom. He's a little screwy. Watch Tom out Tom's for him. Tom's the best one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We've got diet Tom Tom. We've got Tom Tom with lemon. It's crazy. It really is. That's the best word I can think of to describe a lot of this. Justice. Now he's a little bit crazy himself. You got to look out for him. Justice oh, on the receiving end. Tom Lawler, very uh, festively dressed here, very Americana. Here this week. Well, look, Matt Justice, clearly a lunatic. I don't know what kind of testing we have here in MLW, but I know in WTF there's no testing at all, and Tom, Tom loves it. Are you talking about mental testing? All sorts of yeah, testing. 5150 50 maybe for that Any guy. sort of testing. How about an IQ test? Well, look, I have the highest IQ in all of sports entertainment. Everybody knows that. I'm certified Mensa to the, me I, to the sixth degree. I've got six stripes uh, on my black belt I'm only, Mensa. Oh, I'm only two degrees. Okay, you'll yeah. get there. You'll get there. I think certified was the operative word, but justice teeth first into that middle turnbuckle. What do you know about certified over here, Joe? The WTBF, they're certified as vascular. They're certified as tan, and there's no other certifications that matter. Okay. As long as you and the 27 Tom Lawlers agree, or however many there are. Every time we come out, there I see more and more WTF t-shirts, and they're usually on women. Oh, I was hoping to get a WTF t-shirt. Oh, everyone, they're, so, they're sold out. Look, when you're that vascular, when you have that much muscularity. Well, look when at this. Tom Lawler, Anaconda Vice, inch again on Justice. Oh, yeah, that's in deep. Your guys might get this here, MSL. Could be a submission. Justice to the ropes. Go on, what were you saying? Oh, it would look like he was going to hook him in the eyes. The ref's got to watch out for that. So if WGF wins the tag team titles, what happens next? Where does SGC go? Where does well, MLW go if, in your eyes? If we win the tag team championship of the world, then we are clearly the greatest team in the world. And if you look at Tom Waller, an All-American, as American as one could be, look at that eagle on his shirt. Oh. Matthew, justice explodes. We, at this time of so much turmoil, will bring prestige that America has never had before. Oh, we're going to do a USO tour on the military base. USO bases. tour? Yeah, we're going to do World Titan Federation on a Navy base. I think the soldiers would love that. They would, absolutely. This is ridiculous. Yeah, because if you look at the guns of the World Titan Federation superstars, it blows away anything that the soldiers oh, have. my goodness. St. Laurent, the Bob Hope of sports entertainment. Oh, I just bring hope to everyone. That's the World Titan Federation is all about hope. Everyone hoping they could be this vascular. Everybody hoping they could be this tan. Baller with the strikes and a near fall. There you see that, that combat background of Filthy Tom, former MLW World Champion, by the way. Oh, oh look at that physique. Incredible. The greatest.
Greatest Showman. Tom Lawler, 13, looks great tonight. How did you know he was 13? Wow, I never told you that. That's impressive. Matthew Justice, he's got the resolve of 13 men, though. Perched on that second turnbuckle. Tornado DDT connects. He's going in for the cover there. Hooks that outside leg. Can he get it? Oh, your fall. Where, now, how's your heart? Was that, are you oh, okay? I'm fine. That Tom, was close. Tom Lawler has the fighting spirit of a thousand sports entertainers, all in one from a thousand multiverses. As you count down, the yeah, WTF oh, is going down, says Justice, and St. Laurent gets out of his chair. I told him to stay here. Why does he have to listen to you, Joe? He, he should MSL listen to does somebody. whatever he wants. Justice, that's the problem, if you haven't noticed. Big spear. This match should be over. What is he doing? He just gets the, what the hell's happening? Only, Near fall. Only two, only two. My God, how desperate can you be? No offense, Frank. Wait a minute. Is that Manders? That's a one called Manders straight from the planes. Another member of the second gear crew. Oh, oh. You don't touch a cowboy, Stetson. Oh, Lariat! St. Laurent just got Lariated to one of his alternate realities. Tom Lawler, wait a minute. A roll up. No, couldn't put him away. Caught justice right to the side of the head. Two count and three. Here is your winner, Filthy Tom Lawler. Lawler can't be proud of that. What a match, a little chaotic here, but right now we're gonna go to Joe for an interview ringside. skinniest guy in the world, I can tell you that. Dive from Justice. And while you were getting back in the booth, a huge dive from Justice on a Lawler. Manders the diversion. Justice explodes. Lawler got the win, but the last word goes to the crew. SGC are still ready to hook him up. Any single time you want and fight for their freedom, for their for their brand of down and dirty wrestling. Battle lines have been drawn, but bottom line is will the World Tight Federation wrestle the World Tag Title from the second gear crew in just days at Intimidation Game across the world on Trailer TV Plus. Bob Tom Waller is craving gold, Matt Riddle is hungry for competition. Earlier tonight, he called roster and we understand that open contract has been signed let's find out who has stepped up to oppose Matt Riddle taking control of that arm short arm lariat planted down wanted a fight, he's got one. Challenge accepted by Big Bad Tito. This clash takes place live from New York City, February 29th only on Trailer TV Plus. What about the big fight still ahead tonight? The Buckley Brawl. Mads Cruel Kruger's official return to the ring to oppose a Samoan werewolf. He left motion.
legendless two weeks ago, Jacob Batu. But up next, Cesar Duran is here, and we're about to find out the latest acquisitions to Azteca Lucha. It's next. MLW Burning Crime is brought to you by our sportsbook partners, Bet Online. Bet on almost anything, from football to soccer to esports to politics and elections. Head to betonline.ag on your desktop or phone and get started with massive welcome bonuses. Well, we were all witness to the return of El Jefe at Superfight as Cesar Duran revealed himself as the man responsible for bringing the biggest draw in Lucha Libre history, Mistico, to the Major League. And boy, did it ruffle some feathers in the process. My Renegades! Have you missed me? I know you have. <laughs> what do you think of that Mistico fight? Awesome, huh? Well, that is just the beginning. I just spent all this time that I was, let's keep it there, I wasn't here. I just spent all this time recruiting new luchadores from all over the world to join my Azteca Lucha roster. And I have great surprises for you all. Do you guys want to know who they are? What? I can't hear anything. I hear little babies. Is this little babies? What is this? You want it? Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay, the God of Lucha Libre, myself, is giving you this gift to my renegade children. Here they come. These are the guys. Consequences, and you have, you have, little kid. You're upset because of the way that Mystico beat Avernos ass, and you're upset because of the way my newest signee, Mascara Dorada, the way he took the title, the CMLL, from Rocky. So many reasons to be upset, to be honest. It's very, it's quite interesting that that's what you think. I think you're getting old and your brain is getting foggy. Because I remember clearly what you did to me. And I know damn well that you remember what I did to you. Because every single night you go to bed thinking about it. You cry yourself to sleep. You whimper like a little 
little lap dog. Kind of like when I dragged you out of your nice MLW job last summer. Oh, 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 you know what's the most humiliating part about all this? That I have proof. I have a video of you crying while I have some men beating wow. your little bitch wow. ass. That never happened. No, no, that's no, 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 no. Yes, and I have another video Bull that's a lie. of him pissing himself. You know what? I'm gonna show you guys the video of him pissing himself. You know what? How they don't that? have it. It doesn't exist. But you know what? I feel fear. And the fear doesn't only come from you. It comes from your luchadores. Look at them, look at them. And you know why you're all fearful? Because you know I'm gaining power in MLW. And I'm gonna get every single scrap of gold that your stupid Promociones Dorado has made so far. And then you're gonna have to come back to me again and ask me for some money because you're gonna be broke. Because you were born to be broke all your life. And you're gonna be broke again and again and again and again. And you're gonna have to ask me for some money, little kid. Oh, really? Really? That confident? Okay, if that is the case, why don't we do this? Let's have a title, a fight for the title between one of my Azteca luchadores and your little pet, Rocky Romero. What do you say? What do you say? Do you guys want to see that right now or whenever? Okay. What is it going to be? You have a deal. Whoa. Selena takes down Cesar Duran, and this unhinged mentality of Selena continues. Selena needed to be restrained by Rocky Romero Jesus Rodriguez. And it looks like the balance of power continues to be fought for. And Cesar Duran got inside the head of Selena De La Renta. And what's the next big power move gonna be? Started when Brett Ryan Goss 
also became insanely jealous because Love Doug was trying to talk to his girlfriend Becca. That led to a Love is Blindfold match, which Goslin tried to cheat to win by peeking through the hood and using brass knuckles. But the power of love led Doug to victory. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're unfamiliar with a lumberjack match, this is exactly what it's all about. If someone tries to get out, if, if someone tries to escape the ring, all the lumberjacks and Jills will come and try to bring them back into the ring. I mean, this match is already off to a hot start. Well, both men met in a Love is Blindfold match a month ago, and Brett used Nux illegally after taking a peek and noticing where Doug was. Those brass knuckles knocked Love Doug out of the ring, and Brett has claimed that if Doug didn't <coughs> cheat and fall out of the ring. Brett would have won the matchup. That's why there's Lumber Jackson Dills keeping these athletes in the ring. And there you see Deppin and McCoy and Mimi and Crawford pouncing on Love Doug. This is not what the match is supposed to be. No. They're supposed to throw the competitor back in. Yeah, it looks like they're having a little fun, maybe taking some liberties on the outside. Well, and Love Doug uh, getting the worst of it there. Brett Ryan Goslin, so vain, so full of himself. As is now a besties with Zeta, which I guess makes him a World Titan Federation superstar. And he's all what a superstar is all about. Ba vanity, image. Oh, cover here. Inside leg hooked. Promising Not sweet enough victory, leverage. but only finds two. I gotta tell you, I don't think it's about, you know, anything other than the fact that BRG, right, I like to call him BRG, and Zeta, they're just besties. You know, they're just, they're just bestest of friends. And okay. I think they're a great pairing. I think, I think they're great for each other. They're gonna make a lot of money together in this sport. Can I tell you what I think Brett is? I think he's a hypocrite. He got mad at Doug for making friends with a girl he was seeing a few months ago, and all this vitriol came out of his mouth. But now Brett turns around, and he starts making female friends of his own. What's that about? Brett sends love Doug to the outside, but Doug hangs on. There's friend and foe out there. That's more like it. That's the idea behind Lumberjacks and Chills. Just get them back in the ring. Don't let the action spill out. And Brett has no idea. I love it. In with a crossbody. I'd say Brett is all about vanity, all about image, all about style. But Love Doug cares about what's inside of you. How big is your heart? How much do you care? Love Doug sees the beauty in everyone. He sure does. As Love Doug standing him up now. Beautiful elbow by Love Doug in the corner. And you know, Love Doug wears his heart on his sleeve, but he can fight. Don't forget about that. All oh, rose petals. Brett never saw that one coming. Spring off with a bulldog nicely done. Athletic offense by Love Doug decides to hook the inside leg Beat there. Oh, no. man, that was close. Only two. Love Doug nearly beat him again. Oh, and Brett being protected on the outside. Jesus Rodriguez, Zeta, of course. Come on, Lumberjacks, get him in there. Got wasted youth, Delmi Exo out there. Nola Catano. And here we go, you knew it was gonna boil over. Yeah, bro, break it out now on the outside. Looks like the Lumberjacks and the Lumberjills are hitting each other. Yeah, they've for completely forgotten about the rules and regulations. It's just a, a bedlam out here. But look at Love Doug up on the top, high risk, top turnbuckle to the outside, goes Doug. Taking out all the Lumberjacks and Jills. A love was the wind beneath Doug's wings as he soars to the floor. And now, oh, and, and Brett escaped the, oh, the brunt of it as this fight continues. Doug got a major of revenge in that blindfold matchup, but looking to go 2-0. Oh, Zeta oh, getting no. involved. A distraction there for Love Doug. 
and BRG taking advantage. Brett Ryan Gosselin just so oh, wait, smart. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's Sada's move. That's I'm prettier. I don't know, Joe. This might be it. And yeah. Brett Ryan Gosselin wow. looking pretty in victory. Here is your winner, the victorious BRG. each other's reality, Brett Ryan Goslin and Zeta. But you know what? Hey, Zeta could be the next featherweight champion. She could be. Brett Ryan Goslin, the, sky, the sky's the limit on him. He's got a ton of potential. He is raw talent personified if he can keep his focus. But will this bestie relationship help them bring out the best in each other? Or will they be stuck in the clouds? Well, they got the dub tonight here, Joe. Looks like all that delusion, all that self-importance and arrogance is actually working for them. Brett Ryan Goslin and Zeta, a hell of a pair here in MLW. While the besties celebrate, I'm reminded that there is no one celebrating the return of Contra Unit. The destruction and decimation they caused throughout the major league will never be forgotten. Take a look. I haven't heard this music in, in two years. Black hand of Contra! It's Bert Kruger! The malice of Mad Kruger with the resurrection of the most dominant force in MLW history, Contra you. in his hand. Streaming worldwide. It's the more werewolf, even though that's the name. For real, for real, Jacob Fatu is not no gimmick. They just look such like stars. I idolize them. You want the real story? Let's get it. All is fair in love and war. Sammy Callahan, my brother! I know exactly where you stand! We're revealing our cards in this game of war. For the soul of Carcosa, quote the Raven, nevermore. Something old, something new, something borrowed. Something blue. <laughs> the following tag team bout is set for one fall. Introducing team number one, promoted by St. Laurent. Hailing from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and Westport, Connecticut, respectively, at a total combined weight of 497 pounds, World Titan Federation Superstars, Davey Boy Smith Jr. and Richard Holiday. Uh, MSL wearing the wounds of inserting himself in situations that he really shouldn't. But the bottom line is, MSL is an incredible he has an eye for the biggest, the baddest, the toughest, the strongest, and he has molded this group, this World Titan Federation of superstars who can carry out his cause of explaining to you why you should like what he likes and nothing else when it comes to this sport. NSL has a lot of haters, but you can't argue with the results. Some of the best and the best of the world come to MLW to work with My NSL. My name is St. Laurent. Legitimate promoter of the World Titan Federation. And we are so disgusted to be back here in Philadelphia. Now everybody's talking about the return of Satoshi Kojima and his stupid, idiotic, inconsiderate, and undisciplined bread club. Now here in the World Titan Federation, we have a zero tolerance policy when it comes to carbohydrates. I'm talking no bread, I'm talking no bagels, and I'm certainly talking no Philly cheesesteaks. Does that include MSL himself? Never mind. We are focused on vegetables and protein because everybody knows that bread is for fat, undisciplined, 
legend. Better be ready to back up your words. Their opponents from Japan at a total combined weight of 447 pounds, Satoshi Kojima and Shigeo Okimura. They are Kuzimax. Okimura was the corner man at Super Fight as Satoshi Kojima made history, becoming the only two-time world Suzuki. Whoa, whoa, Suzuki. whoa! A first defense should be against a member of the World Titan Federation. It's what the world is watching because you might be a two-time champion, but I am a two-time legitimate promoter. What do you say? Whoa! You must have said he's Japanese! God damn it! All right, I gotta be honest with you real quick. That is one of my favorite things I have ever seen in Major League Wrestling. St. Laurent has had that coming to him for so long. That and a whole lot more. But in all seriousness, you know the World Titan Federation is extra motivated and extra upset looking to make a statement at the expense of the new champion tonight. And you see Okamura going to start out with Richard Holiday. You talk about two very diverse lifestyles, diverse backgrounds. We know Richard Holiday won't stand on any morals or values. We know Richard Holiday is all about the money, whether he's shilling a coffee brand or whether he's signing the big fat WTF contracts with a massive signing bonus. Richard Holiday has always been about the business and not anything about the sport. So I take it you're, you're working for free tonight, Joe. I'm not saying that. So then maybe you're all about the money. I'm saying that Richard Holiday's loyalty can be bought. You put a price on anything, I'll tell you right now. That may be Rich Holiday's case. just doing exactly what he needs to do to put himself in position to become a, a champion here in MLW. Series of forearm shots, but it's Holiday now, turning things around. But Okamura gets the back kick in. Off comes that mask. The veteran, oh, got caught up off guard with the elbow by Holiday for two. Japan versus the United States. It's Atlantic versus Pacific. It's everything you want from professional wrestling coming together here in the major leagues. And Okamura. Dizzy's Holiday throws him off his game and tries to take him down that way. Holiday, a former World Tag Team Champion and MLW former Caribbean Champion, came within a hair becoming the MLW World T Champion against Alex Kane a month ago on Triller at Kings of Coliseum. He came up just short, but with the WTF backing him up, I don't see that lasting. I see Rich Holiday having gold in his future. I see Davey Boy Jr. having gold in his future. P perhaps tonight is the beginning of a tag team championship run for these two men. To that point, a pinfall over Satoshi Kojima, even in a tag team matchup, will go a long way to establishing Holiday or Davey Boy Smith Jr. on the top of those rankings. A major statement can be made. Davey Boy trying to showcase that power. You see Davey Boy uh, paying homage to his late father, the uh, jeans look that uh, Davy Boy Sr. had popularized towards the end of the 1990s. And he looks great. Yes. Maybe a longer look as now a shoulder tackle. As step up by Davy Boy Smith Jr. caught in a hip lock takeover by Kojima. 32 years in the game, but still can move lightning fast. Thir 32 years, and he made his MLW debut back in 2002 and Davy Boy making his debut in 2002 at the age of 18 2004 excuse me Joe yeah these are two long-standing major league stalwarts and a collision center ring nobody moves Kojima takes none too kindly to being insulted to having his favorite food being insulted to having any of these disparaging remarks from St. Laurent or the rest, Okamura attacked back in, and we have seen month after month, St. Laurent has tried to procure that MLW World title. It may be the final piece 
to a WTF rebrand. They want the WTF world title. They want this to be sports entertainment, and we're all superstars. And anybody that thinks or feels for themselves, well, they're on the unemployment line. Nice takedown by Okubora. And now the low drop kick on Davy Boy, neutralizing that power into the cover. Two count only. Davy Boy kicks out. Yeah, that basement drop kick was really nice. Both feet landed on the kisser. He thought he had a pinfall there, but it was only two. He's going to have to do a little more work to take down the Hall of Fame son, Davy Boy Jr. Okamura, a former CMLL tag team, or a tag champion and trios champion, one of Okamura's trios partners, none other than Hiroshi Tanahashi, who finds himself in his own position of power these days across the ocean. As Davy Boy Smith Jr. tears that family homage, the stalling vertical suplex. In a only, cover, two count only. Only kings and queens can hang out with the ace, and you got to know, in Japan, in Jap Japanese media, this is the biggest, these are the biggest guys. I mean, this is what Japanese wrestling is all about. And right now in a bad they, position, though. Punishing Okumura up and down the appendages of the veteran. Holiday showing off. Okumura has that fight. And it's so great that we have someone here to help watch the back of Satoshi Kojima, who doesn't have these factions, who doesn't have these, these super groups watching his back. Kojima's always good on his own, but in these days, in this age of MLW, it's almost impossible. Factions are one of my favorite things about sports entertainment, Joe. What's wrong with a good faction? About what? Oh, not you two. Okamore hit the clothesline. St. Laurent cheering out. Here comes Kojima. Beelines right for Davy Boy. And Holiday the receiving end as well. Nasty chops in the corner, strong style on display from Kojima. My God, the ferocity of Kojima as he charges through. And Davy Boy. Was there a tag there? I have no idea if there was a tag. Knowing St. Laurent wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if there wasn't. As he's barking, St. Laurent thinks it's above the wall. Everybody should listen to him. Kojima sends the superstars colliding. DDT. Nasty DDT right in the center of the ring. Kojima Okumura. Double team into the cutter. Okumura may be a variation of Kojima's cozy cutter. Shoulders down. Your false situation there. Davy Boy, a tag team veteran, knows right where to be. Or the overhead suplex. There's something different about these Japanese wrestlers when they come to America. There's something strong. There's something powerful. Somersault Senton. These high-risk maneuvers, the striking. Look at Kojima here. Look at him put it away. Uh, there's the cozy cutter. Can he pin Holiday? Kojima connects. Now oh, in your fall. My God, and, oh, it could be time for Kojima's bread and butter, if you'll excuse the expression. I see what you did there. Talk to him by Stan Hansen himself, but a holiday. Cuts him off at the pass. No Larry at this time around.
your main event is a Buckley Brawl! Introducing first, standing seven feet tall, the Black Hand of Contra, Mads Cruel Kruger! Cruel, an operative middle name for the Black Hand of Contra, Mads Cruel Kruger, who a couple of weeks ago at Super Fight made a most unexpected return. I'd seen some of the glitches over the weeks yeah. on our broadcast. Yeah, it started to be a little obvious. I yeah. thought it was a production error. I hoped it was a production error. Yeah. Maybe somebody corrupted a file somewhere, but no, this man was corrupting the files. This man has corrupted and shortened so many careers as part of Contra Unit, the most devastating force from the brink of demise, stronger and more dangerous. And his opponent, position. Fatu, a former world champion here in Major League Wrestling, and he is looking beaten up and battered. He came into this match with his head bandaged from the damage done from Contra. And think about the damage in the matchup with Yuji Nagata just a couple of weeks ago. And look out, this is, this is too Yeah, close. they're getting a little too close, too for, close comfort for comfort here, here Joe. I yeah. like this a damn bit. I'll, I'll make some room for you, partner. This is crazy. If we could be in the next county, I'd prefer it. As Fatu Big and Kruger. nasty headbutt by yeah. Fatu there. Fatu with some words. What are we going to see here? It's going to be really difficult to get the big man up as he's trying. Oh, potentially a reversal here by Kruger. Both these men are, are 300 pounders. There's no room to breathe oh, here. And a right hand by Fatu may move the action elsewhere. My God. Fatu. Now look at that. This cannot Joe. be restrained, can't be controlled. If we can get a shot of this production team, Fatu has a steel chair he just threw into the ring. And folks, if you like violence, if you like backyard brawls, this might be one to yeah. watch. It's a Bakley brawl here that, between That's what I meant to say. Fatu. And a street and fight might be breaking out here, Joe. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is wartime. It's the Contra Kingpin against the Black Hand of Contra. You can argue who was more responsible for the success of Contra all those years, terrorizing MLW to its very core. But when Contra imploded and these men turned on one another, ah, the wars will go down in history, just as that chair shot will. Nasty chair shot there. But you gotta wonder now that Contra has seen a resurgence, now that Mads Cruel Kruger is back on the scene, targeting Jacob Fatu right where he left off a couple of years ago. What does that mean for Fatu? What does that mean? What does it mean for MLW? That's right. I mean, this company oh. is in chaos ever since the appearance and the yeah. return of Contra. 
and, and the commander leading these new look soldiers into battle. Wow. Cheer shot. Kruger always wanted to be the man at the helm, always wanted to call those shots. And think about this, Joe. I mean, he just slammed a steel chair right into Kruger's forehead. Kruger only going down to one knee. And Batu going handspring. Oh, and just got overwhelmed by the seventh footer. Nasty. Who drops Batu face first on a chair. Max, Mads Cruel Kruger, damaging, assaulting, frankly, just beating the daylights out of Fatu. There's no one else big enough. There's no one else brave enough. There's no one else tough enough to manhandle Jacob Fatu in quite that way. We've seen so many try. Some have succeeded briefly. Most have failed. But Mads Cruel Kruger is standing tall, defiant, and fearless. Big right-handed chops for Fatu, almost with no effect on Kruger. Reminds me of one of those horror movie monsters, one of those 1980s killers. He just, it, it's just no one quite like Kruger. And, and for Contra to be back here in Major League Wrestling, it's, it's just bad news for everyone. And, and you know what, Christian, if you want to chase that metaphor a little bit further, now that he's back, we're in the sequel. And how do you kill the monster this time? It's gonna be tough, Joe. Contra, more venom than ever before as Mads Cruel Kruger sets up that table. The black hand that has, oh, done so much damage for the sake of that group. But now with a new army and new blood soldiers. You got that right. And we saw like what they 20, did. 20, 30 yeah. men with, with, with Kruger last time we saw him. Held Fox to power. Oh, but through the table. Steps. And it absolutely exploded, splintering all over the broadcast position. And splintering all across the body of Cruel Kruger. Fox to hurls the chair. Ch oh, chokes that choke. My God. I've never seen anything quite like that, Joe. That's a 300 pound man. That Kruger just overwhelmed and manipulated like that. That's scary. And How do you, you can see do that? Almost an emotion now on Kruger as he's starting to get angry, frustrated, almost wanting to do as much damage as he can on Fatu. I think I think what you're seeing is urgency. I think Mads Cruel Kruger sees an opportunity, sees a moment. Kruger going under the ring, trying to find a weapon. No weapon is quite good enough for him yet, but what has he got here? Some sort of case. Oh, oh look at this, a, a, an army helmet I'm seeing. Oh. I'm seeing a kendo stick. I'm having flashbacks to the weapons of mass destruction match. These are implements of war. Battle lines are drawn. And it's almost like Kruger could have gone for a pin moments ago, yeah. and, and he's just not going for it. it. It seems that the motivation for Kruger is to do as much damage oh. to Fatu as possible. Huge Savant kick, and another one. And this is why, why we've come to love Fatu. Fatu still has fight. Alius connects. Perfectly executed Alius. Fatu. Able to fight back, Fatu with the agility, Fatu with the speed. Look at Fatu! You never seen anything like it. Handspring moonsault. And for the first time, Kruger retreats and the Samoan Werewolf Sars! Jacob Fatu showing why he's an anomaly of an athlete. And a spear connects. Fatu going for the cover, wants to get the oh. win! Unable. Those push kicks, those Savat kicks from Fatu, absolutely beautiful. On the button. On Fatu's Swanton City! That might be it. Fat Cool Kruger defeated! Oh, not quite. Any other man is gonna be. <coughs> Excuse me. Fatu and Kruger. Any other man would be down for three there, Joe, but I think we're dealing with a monster here. I'm, I'm choking and coughing at the thought of it. Mads Cruel Kruger, you gotta wonder, 
where he has been for the past two years. What has he seen? What has he endured to get himself back in the frame of mind to carry out this fight? And Kruger back towards him. Oh, look out! Look out! Jesus! Through the table! There's bodies and wreckage in front of us! Ah, my, my headset almost flew off. Just nasty violence right in front of us. This is why people talk about MLW. Cruel. Cruel may be in a, a million pieces in, a, in his own right, but oh, what the hell? Kruger, Kruger's on his feet. What is going on? This, this, this freak of nature. He is a freak. Is, is still fighting. What is Fatu going to have to do to, to exercise his past from the here and the now? Kendo stick. Absolutely nasty. Well, they Fatu putting everything into that. What's he gonna do here, Joe? Oh, no, oh. no. Oh, the knee. Too much damage on the leg. Fatu gave out. He's going for it again, though. A, a, a more careful setup. Fatu executes beautifully. Wow. Fatu, man. The heart of this guy to be able to fight back against a monster like Kruger. Hey, Fatu. Choice words from Fatu. And this dagger Kruger kicks out. Mads Kruger backing into the corner. Fatu hammering away on Kruger. Trying to exercise his past. Jacob Fatu. Look out. Fatu gets the hip attack on Mads Kruger. Oh my God. Kruger has through fire. Mads Kruger does through fire in Jacob Fatu's face. Where the hell did that come from? I've never seen anything quite like that. That's Kruger. Disgusting. Move Disgusting fire. act by Kruger. And then scorched earth. Play some of the ferocity and maliciousness we've seen here tonight as Mads Cruel Kruger leaves Jacob Fatu late. What is this? Fatu. Fatu may be blinded. Fatu is burned. And now, no. That, that's that Sentai Death Squad. That army of of, of men that, 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 that attacked Fatu recently. Christian, Christian you can smell burning flesh in the air. The whole building smells like burning flesh and That's burning hair. That's sickening. I, honestly, Joe, I, I, What the hell is this? I'm pretty uncomfortable watching what's happening here. That's a, that's a body bag. Joe, I, I might Joe, have to get on. out of here, bud. Come on now. This is, this is, oh, he just punched the ref, stop. Joe. Come on. This is, this is way too much. Way too Joe, much. Joe, stand over here, bud. Get, get, get I, over here. Come here. There's got to be over a dozen of them. Fatu's not moving. Remember what happened last time? These all, men were in the ring with Fatu. All of the behest, it seems like almost mind control from Kruger. What is happening to MLW? They say in wartime, it's not about who is right, but it's about who is left. And it looks like Jacob Fatu is being loaded into a body bag and removed from Contra's hit list in violent fashion. What are we watching right now? Kruger looking on at his damage, and this is just such an unsettling visual. Oh, yeah, baby. Joe. So, 
that's a former world champion here. It's a human being. He's got a family. He's got kids watching this. This has got to be his worst moment. I didn't sign up for this, I gotta be honest. We've seen Contra do some remorseless things over the years. This is the longest reigning MLW World Champion in history. I mean, I, across the shoulders. I was gonna say someone should stop this, but, but, but who can stop Contra? These are trained mercenaries carrying out Batu. Contra is not just a crusade, it's a lifestyle. It appears the only way to truly leave Contra Unit is in a body bag. Who's gonna stop Mads Kruger? Who's Mads, gonna stop Contra? Mads Kruger makes a statement at the expense of maybe the greatest world champion he's ever seen, a family man. What, what, what the hell are they gonna do to him now? 